Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by today. The topic that's gonna be covered on this video is all about the importance of vintage as it applies to wine. Now this is a bit of a deep dive into the topic. As I put together the talking points, there's a lot of info here. There's also gonna be a tasting at the back side of the video, which is gonna to help to illustrate some of the points that I've brought out throughout the, the discussion. And if I do this right, at the end of the video, you're gonna clearly know what vintage means. You're gonna know when it's important, when it's not so important. And it's gonna be something I think you might find helpful the next time you go out and do a little bit of wine shopping. First, vintage simply refers to the year in which the fruit was harvested. Wine is an agricultural product and weather variations can impact the fruit and the subsequent wine in a number of ways. Some of these challenges that may arise can be overcome, others not so much. It's also worth noting that vintage goes beyond just simply weather. For instance, one example would be in recent years, there's been a rise of problems with wildfires around the world. You're finding this in the West Coast, in California, Oregon, Washington. Uh, you're seeing it in South Africa, Australia, Spain, and a number of other places as well. When this type of situation occurs, sometimes you run the risk of something called smoke taint. And that's actually that fruit being affected by the settling dust and residue from those fires. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so right now. It really does mean a lot to this channel. Also hit that like button. These things really do make a difference. If you have any comments, post them down below. I try to follow up on every one of them. Your support is much appreciated. In the Northern Hemisphere, the grape harvest typically takes place in the latter part of August, sometimes into the latter part of October, occasionally even a bit later than that. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's a very different story. There, everything is reversed. Harvest is typically in February through April. What this means is that part of the growing season will actually happen in the prior calendar year versus the actual harvest year. For example, in Argentina in late 2022 in November, the country was hit by very severe frost issues. Those frost issues will impact the harvest that'll take place in early 2023. In many places around the world, weather conditions will vary, sometimes considerably from year to year. Things like frost, heat spikes, hail, severe rainstorms, all of these things can impact the fruit coming from a vineyard, which subsequently can impact the wines themselves. Now, I'm going to guess that most of you out there don't own a vineyard, but probably a good number of you are backyard gardeners. And if that's the case, you can relate to how weather variations from year to year can impact your veggies, your fruit trees. It's really no different than what happens with a vineyard. Now, vineyard techniques and winemaking methods have improved greatly over the years, and to some extent, this has mitigated some of the effect that weather can have on a particular vintage. There have been some vintages in the past, going back to, let's say, the 1960s, for instance, where there was some god-awful vintages in Bordeaux. If that same sort of weather pattern were to happen today, because of the new technology that's being used, respectable wines can often be produced. Now that said, from a winemaking perspective, it's always best to try to get the best quality fruit from the vineyard itself versus doing some sort of crazy Cirque du Soleil move in the winery in order to correct problems. Now for a brief moment, I wanna talk about broad market wines. I'm talking about those that you find spread far and wide in every sort of outlet. In many cases, these are the types of wines that try to downplay the effects of vintage. They're looking for a consistent wine from year to year. And one of the ways that they do that is from blending through a wide range of sources. Global warming is a bit of a wild card in this whole equation. Changes are quite clear in a number of wine regions around the world, but how this ultimately plays out is still rather unclear. Is a vintage wine necessarily better than a non-vintage wine? It can be, but not necessarily. Any wine that has a vintage on the label is considered a vintage wine. It's not an arbiter of quality. It's a little bit like the old Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Both vintage and non-vintage can fall into any of those categories. But there's no denying that there are some fantastic non-vintage wines produced. You think of a lot of the, the best-known champagne brands, 
uh, many tawny ports, Madeira. These can all be incredible wines and they're blends of a number of different vintages. So for instance, if you were to have a top-notch producer in a vintage that was not all that strong, and then on the other side, you had a so-so producer in a great vintage, who's gonna produce the better bottle of wine? In many cases, I would contest it's going to be the former. That's a, that's a broad generalization. There's certainly going to be exceptions. But the point is, vintage is not the be-all, end-all in terms of quality. Now, another value that a vintage date on a label provides, it's a reference point of that wine's particular life cycle. Now, I've said this before on a previous video, but the truth is most wines have a relatively short life. Three to four years in many cases. Sure, there's exceptions going on both sides, but generally speaking, it's a fairly short shelf life. So if you have a vintage that you can use as a reference point, it gives you some indication of the condition of that particular wine. Think if you went into a store and you found a selection of Sauvignon Blanc and Italian Pinot Grigios, for instance. You're always going to be better off buying the, the vintage that is going to be most current. It's going to be the fresher, brighter style. The older vintage, in many cases, is going to be oxidized, tired. It's lost a lot of the attributes that make that wine appealing. For illustrative purposes, I put together a small tasting. Two wines from the same chateau. This is a Bordeaux estate called Chateau Franc Le Main. It's a small Saint-Emilion producer. It's not a Grand Cru level. It's more of a base level Saint-Emilion. One is a 2017, one is a 2018. They're essentially made from the same grape varieties. They're sourced from the same place. The wines are vinified in a very similar manner. The big variable here is vintage. You may ask, why did I choose these particular wines? Well, really there's two reasons. First off, I had these available in my cellar, easy. The other is, it is a good comparison of a wine at a good quality level it's not what I would call uber artisanal. It's not broad market commercial. It's somewhere in between. And for that reason, I think it serves its purpose. Well, the first wine that I'm going to try is the 2017 vintage. And within Bordeaux, 2017 is quite a complicated year. There were some issues early in the growing season with frost. A little later in the year, there were issues with rain. When it wasn't raining, oftentimes the sun didn't come out. So ripeness is not ideal for the 2017s. But because vineyard practices have improved so much over the years, the wines are actually still quite solid. The alcohol level is quite low. In this case, this one's only 12.5, which by today's standards is really very low for, for Bordeaux. But when you look at the color, there's good color density at the core. There's some fade out at the rim, so this is not what I would say is a super concentrated wine, but the color is, is really quite solid. Aromatics have a bit of that pyrazine note, that capsicum character, and it's a little bit green. It's got a little lean character to it, but there's some nice red fruit there as well. And on the palate, there's, there's good presence. The front palate's solid, the mid's decent, it's got okay length, not an overly complex wine. Tannin levels are, are fairly low. I don't see this as a wine that would have some good aging potential. I think as time went on, all of its attributes that are positive today are going to fade, and I just don't think there's enough structure there to give this wine a lot of longevity. And now on to the 2018. And this is a very different vintage. It was much less problematic than, than what happened in 2017. The temps were warmer, uh, the fruits were riper. Subsequently, the alcohol levels were a bit higher. In this case, this is a 13, where well, the previous was 12.5. Was but the color density here is more intense. It has a deeper core. As you get out to the rim of the glass, it maintains that color more towards the edge. In terms of aromatic, there's more intensity. There's more red fruit. It has less of that pyrazine note. It's a wine that's got more structure. There's more weight. There's more concentration to it. 
On the palate, there's also more substance. You can tell the wine just has more volume, more heft to it. The front palate is a bit more intense. Good palate presence on the mid, a long finish. The tannins in this wine are much more evident. The structure, the concentration, the way this wine is built, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that 2018 has a much longer aging potential to it. The two wines are very different from one another, even though many things from one vintage to the next are the same. We're talking about the place of origin, what the wine is made from, and how the wine is made. All of those things remain largely the same. The only variable you have is vintage, and you can absolutely see that, smell it, and taste it in the glass. The bottom line is this. In some cases, vintage is very important. In other cases, not so much. As for those where it's not so much, think more of those broad market wines. Those are more commercially available in, in many places. Those are typically made in a style that minimizes the impact of vintage. They're looking more for consistency from year to year. You buy a bottle of it today, you buy a bottle some years from now, and those wines are gonna be very much alike. Conversely, the other side, for more artisanal, those smaller producer wines, in many cases, wines that maybe you're gonna consider cellaring away for a period of time, vintage is very important with those types of wines because again, vintage can impact the character, the quality, the longevity. So I would suggest do a bit of due diligence if you fall into that second category. Thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. Vintage is one of those topics that we could talk about on and on. I'd love to hear your comments. Please post them down below. I try to respond to every one of those. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It really helps this channel. And until next time, cheers.